I always felt that if we can get it started and we can get it up, good things will happen. It kind of got that, well, gee, this may be a goal. This, this may work. Well, I think it's a critical component of our community. Uh, we need more and more safe gathering spaces, especially for the young people to go. I don't think the Fredericksburg community would be nearly as vibrant as it is if the Y hadn't been here. It's amazing. There's really no other thing in town like it that the Y does. They touch so many people, from children to the underprivileged, um, and just to see it in every county um, that we service. The Y, to me, is just a beautiful group of people who really care. It deserves to be celebrated for its contribution and work ethic in the Fredericksburg community for 50 years. What a gift to this area to have the Y and what all of you do every day. We came to Fredericksburg in 1967. There really wasn't a great deal uh, for families and children in particular to do. We felt <clears throat> that a YMCA or something along that line would be very helpful to the Fredericksburg and to all the folks that live here. I was 25 years old, so I come here and I say, we're lacking. We really ought to do something. And the YMCA was really my only experience outside of the church in helping these people and providing. Uh, we didn't have much to start with, to tell you the truth. We had an office over on Prince Edward uh, Street in Fredericksburg, and we ran everything from out of there. And so we were very resourceful in terms of utilizing uh, other facilities to, to begin to establish a presence in the Fredericksburg area. And of course, when you start from scratch, you know, you, you gotta have money. It was uh, not easy to go out and ask people for money on an idea. Fredericksburg had never had the kind of fundraising that we were interested in. They set out a goal of $750,000, I believe. They only raised 500,000. And one of the board members said, well, I guess we just give everybody their money back. And my husband said to him, We build it. Why? I said, because we have to. We told all these people we were going to build a why. We made a promise to the community. We will make it happen. This property through here was open, wide open country. I told Tippy one time, I said, Tippy, I know where the Y ought to be. He said, where? I said, right over there off Deacon Road, there's a huge piece. He said, well, I manage that. The Massive Branch was just a vacant field. That was, the land was donated by John Lee Pratt. We had the land. We went to the community and say, what do we want? And the overwhelming response, they wanted a swimming pool. Our goal was to build a building and have a, a regular Y. They said eight years, nine years, in five years we built this building. And they were able to attain that in 1982 uh, with opening the area's first public indoor pool. And when we got it built, we had all the problems you can imagine with a startup. And there were certain issues that showed themselves in the deficiencies of the building, quite frankly. We didn't have enough money to pay people who worked here. We didn't have enough money to pay the utilities. You needed a four-wheel drive to get in the parking lot out front here uh, because of all the potholes in the parking lot. In 1993, the Y was on the troubled asset list. And it really was a struggle uh, for a long time. We didn't open the door and have everything handed to us. We did a search on bringing in new CEOs, you know, flying them in and so forth and so on. And finally, you know, I made my own personal presentation to the board and said, listen, we don't need to bring somebody in from the outside. We've got a guy right here that can take care of it. He is, has a gift for getting the job done. He was the perfect man for the mission to expand the YMCA in our region. He's very contagious in his passion and in his commitment to all things YMCA, not just one particular location, but the entire movement. Everybody knows him. His heart's in the right place. 
he can take us to soaring heights. This is who we need to hire. Barney is one of the greatest individuals I've met in my life. He's just not afraid to ask. When Barney called you, 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 you knew something was going to happen, and it usually wasn't calling to say just hello. You know, what would you like to sponsor? Do you want your name on this tennis court? How about on this building? What else can we do for you? And what Barney and his staff have accomplished has set the stage for this Y to be the front bearer of the fabric of our community forever. How I got into the YMCA was I was at Mary Washington College and I met the executive director um, and we became friends and uh, he offered me a little bit of part-time work. I loved uh, what the YMCA was uh, all about and especially its uh, mission of helping others, especially those less fortunate. And it's just like, oh my God, this YMCA, this movement of theirs is powerful and it's something that really you know, when you get into it and you really believe in it and you live it, uh, it's like the Holy Spirit working with you, you know, that there is a, a greater calling to help your fellow mankind. We, we clawed our way back. We believed in what we do. There's an old saying, winners never quit and quitters never win. We were a winner. And we were able to have this period of unprecedented growth and then we hit a wall with the recession. The signs were everywhere, but now it's official we are in a recession. Many economists now believe this downturn will be the most severe since the recession of the early 1980s, which lasted 16 months and led to 7.5% unemployment and a record number of bank failures. And that was very difficult for um, every business in this country, especially nonprofits. The recession was a body punch from roughly 2008 um, to about 2014. Um, that, was a, that was a rough uh, six years. But the why never gave up. The why understood that through tough times, that's when a community and a locality needs us the most. Then the second uh, big challenge, as you all know, was the pandemic. Heightened states of emergency across the nation as a number of coronavirus cases soars above 3,000. I'm sad for these people and it feels like there's nothing we can do for them. It feels like it breaks you after a while. You just can't, can't go on trying to fight it off. Governor Ralph Northam put out a new executive order that bans all non-essential travel. So that means if you're not going out to work, you're not going out to get supplies or medical care, you need to stay home. When the buildings shut down, that was very difficult. And we were very preemptive, pleading to our members to stay with us. I ask that all of you today stand by us. It is so important. I call you and petition you to the greater angels of our nature to keep this YMCA going, the why that you've built. But we also pivoted during this time to once again, just like the recession, where does the community need us the most? We had a board member, Mike Turner, call me and say, Barney, where do you need my help the most? First responders, while everyone else was sitting at home trying to figure out what was going on in the world, first responders were required to go to work, to make sure the rest of us were safe. Those first responders had children, and daycare centers were closed down. The Y was an established child care facility. We saw that the Y could be a great assistance to our community in providing free child care during the COVID period, so first responders would not have to worry about the safety of their children. And so Mike was able to mobilize leaders in the community and within four weeks had raised an excess of $200,000 so that we were able to answer, you know, the response of these individuals. And to see the YMCA staff go out there every day in the thick of the, the, the period of COVID and do the work that they did, risking their own health to help others in the community, says it all. If you ever want to know the dedication of the staff, um, I would use their response, their commitment, and their loyalty. That will never be forgotten. You got to hire good people. You got to trust them. And he trusted them to do their job. 
good news is we came on the other end of this better than we went into it. Um, we prevailed. Hey, have you heard? We're reopening and we're so excited. We have cleaned, updated, and sanitized our facilities. We have increased our cleaning and sanitizing materials. Just for you. We have properly spaced our wellness centers to support physical distancing. We will be wearing masks to keep you and our team's health a top priority. We have provided additional safety training for our staff. We plan on screening everyone before entering. We have redesigned our check-in for a touch-free and paperless experience in order to keep you and our staff safe. We are so excited to welcome you back home to the YMCA. Thank you for supporting and never giving up on us. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back! Everyone understands we have a gym. People understand we have swimming facilities. Uh, everyone understands that we follow Christian principles. But when you can see the various programs that we provide to the community, we are really immersed into the fabric of the community. Chucky loves to come to the Y, and he comes about three times a week. And then, uh, you know, at our age, 88, <laughs> we're not moving as fast as we used to, so th this has been an inspiration to me and to my wife. Uh, watching Chuck work out, it makes us work out, and it's keeping us in better shape, and we appreciate that. <laughs> but the main thing that we appreciate is the people. It's always, always been a friendly place, and he thrives on that. <laughs> Silly boy. I know. The YMCA is a critical component for youth development. So we had a Midnight Madness program that we ran for young men and young uh, ladies here uh, at the Massad YMCA. Uh, it was an awesome opportunity for our students to have and for our kids to have um, exposure to some alternative options. When I spoke with some of the kids about, hey, if you weren't here, where would you be? Some of them saying, hey, I'd be playing video games right now, or I'd be hanging out with friends outside somewhere, or uh, I don't know. All that you all are doing as it relates to making sure that families get connected, whether it's after school care, maybe it's some summer involvement, things like backpacks and, you know, the curriculum in the classroom or just even the aid that the, the parents get is all really important and we were impressed. Part of our culture and one of our core values is to give back and the Y touches so many people in our community. We uh, feel like we build houses in the entire region so it's logical and natural for us, particularly when, when Barney expresses needs in terms of an extension or, a, or tennis courts. It's not hard to say, yeah, that, that's what we'll support. My brother uh, was an elite performer in Special Olympics tennis, and he competed at an elite level well into his 50s. When it was presented by Barney that we want to uh, you know, honor him, and, and he's now along uh, on the wall here outside of the Massad Y with his accomplishments listed, along with some other amazing athletes, but John's the only one with, with intellectual disabilities there. And it was one of the highlights of my life to see the dedication of the outdoor tennis courts and be there with my brother and my mom. The ability for a child to come here and get involved in sports or to have after school care or to be able to uh, get some clothing or food. I was amazed at the energy in this building. I mean, every place I went, there was activity. You know, adults were working out on the machines, there were classes going on, there were people in the pool, and when I went on to the basketball courts, it was filled, and the place was just alive with energy. And I looked around, and there were all different people, you know, different ages, different ethnicities, different races, people, you know, the big businessmen who make a lot of money, and people who are struggling. And they were all here. The country can learn from places like the Y, where there's real community spirit, where people work together, where they care about each other. Fredericksburg was like the root and from the root comes a tree. With the wire growing and blossoming, Fredericksburg has grown, pulling together the community, like King George, Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg. The cats pull people together. Honestly, never thought it would be the day when we would have 
four operating facilities. Which is impressive. We went from one facility to four campus facilities now in Planning District 16. We were in the beginning trying to formulate how we were going to make the YMCA grow in the Fredericksburg region. I've always believed in giving back and it was my desire to give back to what Fredericksburg had given to me. In doing that, they approached me and I got involved in building one in Spotsylvania. Uh, my friends in King George seem to really enjoy the one in King George of the stories I get back from them. And so it's a joy to hear people acknowledge that something that was started um, with a thought has involved to not only our community, but the outlying communities also. Having the YMCA come to Caroline was huge. There was a tremendous need in Caroline, so to watch that happen and to see Barney's vision, it's kind of like Field of Dreams, right? If you build it, they will come, and you hope they'll come. And everything that's happened down in Caroline um, has been very exciting. A 50th year anniversary of the Y is a remarkable achievement. If you look back 40 years ago, the Red Panic YMCA had a very improbable future. I was called to be a minister and I felt like I was called to help out with the Young Men's Christian Association. I just drive by during the day and I always check to see how many cars are over here. And I always nod, say good, because it's, it worked. We are blessed that it has continued to grow and grow and grow and contribute to the well-being of our family, our community family. And that is such a warm thought for someone who was there at the beginning. To be able to look back on all of those memories and remember where I was at certain ribbon cuttings and openings and grand events or galas and celebrating, um, to, to remember that I was actually a part of that. You had to wrap yourself around it to really know it, it's worth all the effort that's put into it for everyone. I can't imagine uh, this community without the YMCA. My dream for this organization that in another 50 years, they'll be celebrating 50 more years of success. The legacy of goodwill will be continued and that people will be proud 50 years from now to say, I'm a YMCA member.